guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Carolyn, and today I'm going to be giving you some helpful tips and tricks and some useful information before living at Flamingo Crossings Village on your Disney College program. So I've done a couple of these DCP info session, you know, frequently asked question videos quite recently, and y'all really seem to enjoy them. So I thought I would keep the trend going by giving you some important housing information. Now I have done what I'm gonna call basically part one of this video before. I'll link that up here in the card, but it was actually the second video on my channel with the hut. But in that video, I promised a part two so over a year later, here's part two. Just one more preface before we dive into the actual information. This really is going to be a part two. I'm gonna baby rehash some of the information that I talked about in my first Flamingo Crossings video, but I really want to build off of that. Last time I focused primarily just on paperwork, you know, like your lease agreements, room style, roommate linking, getting a parking spot, kind of the before you start your program, and this still is going to be a before you start your program video, but the paperwork side versus the getting ready to move into Flamingo Crossings, what to expect, and what's going on while you're there. Alrighty, so enough rambling from Carolyn, let's dive in. So for all Disney interns, Disney has, a, actually except for the Disney Hospitality Leader Program, Disney has a big, beautiful new apartment complex called Flamingo Crossings Village, and this is where Disney interns can choose to live over the course of their program. There are three room styles available. There is a two by two. Every single room fits four people, has a shared kitchen and living area. There are then different bedroom options. There is a two by two where you share a bedroom with another person. There is a divider in between your beds. So there is an element of privacy there and you share a bathroom with them as well. Then there's another two people down the hall. Same thing, they share a bedroom and a bathroom. There's a four by two where you have a private bedroom and you share a bathroom with one other person. So four bedrooms, two bathrooms. Lastly, there is a four by four room option where you all have a private bedroom and private bathroom. The rents, I'm not 100% positive what they are at the time that I am filming this video, but at the time that I was doing my program, a two by two was $185 a week, a four by two was $205 a week, and a two by four, no, Wow, not a two by four, yikes. A four by four was $225 a week, which seems scary, it seems like a lot, but honestly, I challenge you to find a cheaper apartment within 15 minutes of Disney World. Oh, and utilities are included in that. The rent comes directly out of your paycheck every week, so you never see it, you never have to worry about going down to the leasing office and physically paying your rent, which is very nice. You will find out what room style you have before before you move down to Disney World. You're going to get two primary, I don't know what to call them. We're gonna call them apartment documents. You're going to get one about a month after you've accepted your program and it's opting into housing, trying to link with a roommate and indicating interest in a room style. You, you can't say I will only live in a four x four. You say I would like to live in a four x four, but Disney will put you where they have space. They do try pretty hard to put you in that apartment style you chose, but it's not a guarantee because people's start and end dates are so weird and so fluid and whatnot. You do have better odds of getting linked with your roommate. As far as I know, I don't know anyone that hasn't been able to link with their roommate, but you can only link with one of them. Then about a month before, uh, a month to two months before your program starts, you'll get another email asking you to sign your lease agreement. This is where you find out which style of apartment you're in. And from there, we are going to segue right into all the new and important information for this video. So depending on what apartment style you get, that's going to, you know, determine what you pack. Every single person, regardless of room style, gets a closet. It's a big closet. There's lots of space in the closet. A dresser, under bed store, and under bed storage. So you have three, and they're all so roomy, oh my gosh. You have three storage options. You have plenty of space to pack stuff. But the main difference 
difference between the two by two and the four by insert number of bathroom here rooms is the size of the bed. The two by twos have the standard college bed size of being a twin XL. The four by insert number of bathroom here rooms have a, I promise I'm not making this up, a full XL. You could get away with full sheets or you could get away with queen because I know full XL is, I literally had never heard of it before. It's a weird, weird word size but that's going to be the most important thing when you find your lease agreement go get the appropriate size bed sheets you're gonna want to spend some serious not serious money but splurge on some nice pillows and some nice comforters because you're gonna come home you're going to be exhausted and absolutely nothing feels better than falling in that bed for that same reason i'm also gonna say invest in an appropriately sized mattress topper you know like the squeezy foam pad the mattress, not bad. I I didn't invest in a mattress topper and I really had no complaints, but it would have been nice to have that extra, extra squishy, you know what I mean? I've been rambling for a second. I'm gonna take a sip of my tea. Be right back. Honestly, one of the best things about Flamingo Crossings is all its amenities. Actually, before I even dive into the amenities, we're gonna talk a little bit about Flamingo Crossings. Flamingo Crossings is actually two apartment complexes. There's one on one side of the street called Flamingo Crossings East. That is the main campus. It is fully, at the time that I'm filming this video, it is fully 100% finished, built, constructed, completed, beautiful. Then across the street, there's Flamingo Crossings West. Now this is where I lived and at the time that I lived there and at the time that I'm filming this video is still actively under construction. So there are fewer apartments over there just at the moment, but when they're completed, they're going to be about the same size. The main difference with the Lingo Crossings East, it, it has this big, community center. I don't know what else to call it. And half of it is called Apprentice Hall. And that's where a bunch of fun, random things happen. Like if you sign up for one of the Mousters classes, that's going to be at Apprentice Hall. Anytime a character comes to meet and greet, that's going to be at Apprentice Hall. On the other side of the main community center is the Disney programs office. There are literally Disney recruiters and Disney programs representatives there. I think nine to five, whatever office hours are. They can answer any of your Disney program specific questions. Both East Campus and West Campus have this community center. East is just much larger. Both community centers have complimentary 24-hour gym. They both have, aside from the Disney programs desk, just, you know, the front main apartment desk. I don't know. I've never really lived in an apartment before. Correction, I've lived in lots of college apartments, so I don't know what to call that front desk, but not Disney program recruiter, Flamingo Crossings representatives front desk. That is where, when the time comes, you will pick up your main gate pass about a week after your program starts. No, about a week after traditions, you're going to get an email saying your main gate pass is available to pick up at the front desk. Go to your campus's front desk. Don't, if you're living at West, don't go to East. If you're living at East, don't go to West. Go to your campus's front desk. Um, they also hold a whole bunch of events exclusively, not just for Disney programs participants, but Disney program participants living at Flamingo Crossing Village, as in you cannot participate if you do not live at Flamingo Crossings. These include things like welcome events, every time a big batch of CPs or just interns comes in because professional interns live there too. They'll have a big welcome event. My theme was, I think it was called A Night in Paris. All your theme really indicates is what character is going to be there. So I had Marie. The week I was moving out, I was so jealous. The theme was zero to hero and they had pain and panic. So yeah, those all have happen at Flamingo Crossings East because Flamingo Crossings East has the space to hold these events, whereas Flamingo Crossings West doesn't. So if you live at West, newsflash, you gotta drive over. You can walk. It's not a fun walk because you gotta, I'm gonna sound crazy, but as soon as you get down there, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. You gotta cross the street to Target. You gotta walk down to this Target intersection. 
because there's active construction. Then you gotta cross the street again. It's like a 20 minute walk from the West Campus to the East Campus. And there is no bus or shuttle that runs specifically between the East Campus and West Campus. You can get on any Disney programs bus. However, they don't necessarily go in the order. Like it'll go like East, West, it's, you know, like park stops, East, West. So that's good if you're going from the East Campus to the West Campus. But if you're going from the West Campus to the East Campus, yeah, you gotta do the whole loop. So I would recommend driving if you can. I'm just gonna throw that in there. If you can bring your car, I would recommend bringing your car. The bus is a very nice free option and gas is very expensive, but they're a little bit unreliable. Most leaders do understand this, but over time that that will add up you you know you'll get points for being late and those points can lead to reprimand i would just recommend bringing a car but if you can't you know just explain the situation to your leaders it's not unknown that disney college program buses break down on the side of the road frequently at this point in time we've talked about the differences between the west and the east campus you'll know which one you're living in when you get your itinerary that is not something you're going to know when you get your lease. You're going to know that when you get your itinerary, when it tells you what address to move into. Your lease just says, hey, you're going to be in this room type. This is your room rate. Capiche? Your itinerary says, hey, move in here on this date at this specific time. That is where you're going to move into. Traditions and casting appointments are no longer being held at Disney University and the casting buildings respectively, despite what Instagram is telling you. They are actually all held at Flamingo Crossings East. So in the apprentice hall that we talked about earlier. So just be prepared for that. Everyone goes to Disney University in the castings building to take the iconic pictures for Instagram. They just no longer have, because this campus is so big and beautiful and was literally designed for that purpose. They don't have you go to Disney University anymore, which is sad, but it's still traditions and it's still super magical. And I'd argue that the rooms are even nicer. It's just, it doesn't have Disney University. Disney University slapped on the outside of the building. But yeah, now after all that, there is at this point in time or at this point in the discussion, there's really no difference between East and West. We've talked about East being bigger, West being smaller and actively under construction. With that being said, parking is a lot easier at West because there's fewer people living there. But each one just has in the same incredible amenities. I already said full size, 24 hour immaculate gym. They have two pools. Each pool has freaking jumbo screen TVs um, where you can just go inside, ask the desk, and they'll put on any movie you want. Package room locked package rooms, passcode protected, or not passcode, key card protected package rooms, actual lockers themselves are passcode protected, mailboxes for small paper right outside your room. These rooms, granted I was in a four by two, but these rooms are quite large, quite roomy, but also quite bare. I would recommend bringing lots and lots of decorations. I brought hardly any and granted Granted, once again, I'll link it up here in the card. My room looked very cute. My bedroom looked very cute. We didn't have any decorations in our common area and it was quite sad. I would bring lots and lots of things. And the problem with bringing, the only problem with bringing lots and lots of things is you don't, you, you're not gonna know who at minimum two of your roommates are before you move in. So it's not like you can do coordinate a group theme, but you're spending six months living in Disney World. You're getting yelled at all day by people People who think you are personally responsible for Splash Mountain being closed during a thunderstorm. Can't tell how many times me at the Grand Floridian, um, you know, I was personally responsible for that. But um, you just want to have an environment that you're happy in. That's the biggest takeaway. Pack as many decorations and as many things as you need to make you happy. Wow, we just got really sappy there for a minute. We're gonna talk about something a little bit more practical. Every single apartment has a in-house washer and dryer. You don't have to pay for them. Boom, they are included in your weekly rent. You do have to buy your own soap and whatnot, but it's not like you have to, you know, my college, it's not put quarters, but you know, like scan your key card. 
return. You don't have to put quarters in to pay for your laundry at Disney. Included in the apartment, it's not even like you have to walk down the hall. It is in every single individual apartment shared among the four people living there. Also, you have a full-sized fridge, a full-sized microwave, and a full-sized oven and stovetop. They are all brand spanking new, stainless steel, very nice for a college interns, but also the price that you're paying, which I know it looks so bad getting $205 taken out of your paycheck every week. But when you add it up, depending on how many weeks are in a month, it's about $800 to $1,000 in rent a month, which I know I'm well aware is not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. But I truly dare you to find a cheaper apartment with four people, 15 minutes from every location on Disney property. So do with that information what you will. If you know you really don't wanna be forking over $205 a week for rent, you know, do the two by two. If I'm being perfectly honest, you and your roommate are going to have such widely different hours, you're never gonna see each other. I worked during the day and Morgan only worked overnight. Saw her for like the first two weeks of the program and then just never saw Morgan again because your hours are genuinely so so different. So the two by two is not the end of the world and you do have that lovely divider in between your beds. But going off of, not even going off of, some more practical things to think about in your apartment. A full HD TV is included with all the apps. I mean, you do have to have logins, but you can access anything on that TV. It's massive. It's like, you can't even see my hands. It's like that big. It's absolutely huge so i wouldn't recommend bringing your own personal tv because there's honestly not going to be space for it in your own personal room you can watch my apartment tour i i genuinely had nowhere to put a tv but i didn't need one i could either watch the one in the common area or put something on on my laptop i didn't really watch any tv during this program so because you're just always in a park another practical thing to think about is disney actually stocks your kitchen now I don't mean food, but plates, glasses, silverware, those are all included. Those come with your apartment. So you don't need to bring plates, cups, or silverware. Um, I am going to include a pack, a cute little packing list graphic in the description down below that I made for you that really hit some of the important things you need to bring on this program. Honestly, if I, if you're not gonna be spending a whole heck of a lot of time in your apartment. You're gonna be sleeping there and that's about it. If you're doing your Disney program right, you're at work or at a park. You're only there for what, like six months, maybe 12 if you extend. You have free access to Disney with discounts on merchandise and food. I know you're exhausted. Go run around the park because when are you gonna be able to do that in your life? ever again. So yeah, that is Flamingo Crossings Village. That is Flamingo Crossings Village. I know I just totally word vomited on you and there was no real clear train of thought here, but key takeaways, Flamingo Crossings has two campuses and three different room styles pretty much assigned randomly. You can link with one roommate. Rent is pulled out of your paycheck. Feel free to decorate to your heart does uh, to your heart's desire and don't bring plates silverware or knives because disney pr not plates cups silverware um do bring sharp knives disney's little butter knives do not cut well so bring a knife set uh i can't remember if it's in the packing list but cute little graphic packing list down below for you to use totally free anyway i hope you all enjoyed watching this i hope you're enjoying this little dcp faq series that i'm doing if you go to uh like my channel page uh i have a whole playlist that's nothing but like dcp FAQ faq informational videos like application tips and tricks the part one of this video room tour all about bell services because i 
had to and talking through every single role on the Disney College program and I want to keep adding more. I do want to break down and not break down but I do want to go over the financials of doing the Disney College program. You know how to not go broke while you're living at Disney um, if that makes sense. So drop any comments, questions you have down below. Feel free to message me. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Feel free to message me on Instagram. Um, I try to respond to as many comments as I can. I'm really good about answering my DMs as well. So honestly, if you have any questions, just send them my way and I will be sure to answer them, you know, as applicable. So I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Congrats, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you either are interested in the Disney College program or you got accepted, which is so exciting. So for those of you in that boat, congratulations on your CP. I hope you have the best time. I hope this video helped you in some way, despite the fact that it's just me word vomiting. And I will see y'all again real soon. Bye!